And of course, our careful and our diligent study of the scriptures has led us to become people of the kingdom. People of the kingdom, people who understand, who grapple with the now and the not yet. We are a kingdom of God movement. The scriptures together with the theology of the kingdom are the bedrock on which we stand. Do you remember Wimber used to teach us about the, the, um, the vineyard man and he had his legs firmly planted and the rock that he was planted on were the scriptures and the kingdom of God. Nothing has changed and nothing must be lost. We look for and expect the breaking in of the kingdom, the rule and the reign of God, the very kingdom of God in everyday life, encouraging a lifestyle that expects it to happen, expects it to be demonstrated wherever we are. Bert Wagner wrote some years ago, the vineyard is first and foremost a kingdom of God movement. It is the central theological motif that directs all our life and practice. It was rediscovered through the theological acumen of George Ladd, you might say, and then it was combined with the wonderful pragmatism of John Wimber. And we have found it to be something to be lived, not just a proposition to be believed. We find that it offers explanation as well as experience, and for that it's very satisfying, very, very pleasing. It provides a theology that is consistent with our experience of the Holy Spirit, and a vehicle for the meaningful expression of his gifts. The kingdom of God keeps us orthodox and it protects us from error, and we hang on to that. Historically, the church, of course, has lurched sometimes from one end of a spectrum to another. The theology of the kingdom saves us from the resignation and the sense of defeat that comes from cessationism. People who say, God never heals today. And God never works miracles. It all died out at the end of the book of Acts. What a shame. It saves us from secessionism. It saves us too from the sort of triumphalism that would say, God always works miracles, if only you would believe it. If only your faith were greater. And if you're not healed, it's your fault. It's a terrible thing to put on a person. A terrible, intolerable burden, which we were never designed to bear. And that poor person you prayed for leaves your place feeling guilty as well as ghastly. It's no good. But the theology of the kingdom, the now and the not yet, keeps us on the straight. And so we have a theology that empowers people to do what Jesus said to do, but supports us through difficulty too. The theology of the kingdom allows us to be unashamed that power and suffering go together. Remembering that for every Peter that was sprung from prison by a passing angel, there was a James who languished and was executed there. It's the theology of the kingdom that keeps us. It's a glorious, glorious thing. I recently heard of one of our pastors who returned from the streets where he and his people had been praying for the sick, and he came home saying, I have fallen in love with the kingdom again. It's a marvelous thing to be 